some months ago, AMD launched a pretty new and interesting line of chips called Strix Halo. And now that it's been a couple months, they are finally starting to get integrated into products that you can actually buy. So you may be thinking, well, what's the big deal? AMD launches a new CPU, they do that every year, sometimes multiple times a year. So what's the difference with this one? Most of us have probably heard of the Apple M series of chips which has something cool called the unified memory architecture, which means that the memory is shared between all components on the die, for example, the CPU and the GPU. This is actually fairly difficult to pull off, because typically the GPU would have its own memory called VRAM, and the CPU would use the one on the motherboard or on the SoC. However, when you're trying to unify these two, you're doing something pretty non-standard, and you're kind of on your own. Lo and behold, five years after the original M-Series launch, AMD has come up with their own take at the unified memory architecture, this time using an x86 uh, architecture rather than ARM like Apple did. Like the Apple M-Series, these chips are pretty efficient, drawing about 140 watts at peak. They're actually intended to be used in laptops and would make for some pretty impressive machines considering their incredible performance. There is one tiny issue. These chips are so non-standard, in fact, that most manufacturers simply gave up on integrating them into a mobile machine. Only Asus and HP have come out with mobile offerings with the Z13 and HP ZBook, and most manufacturers have actually opted for making small desktop computers. And we have one of those mini PC offerings here. This is the GMK Tech Evo X2 mini PC, featuring the Ryzen AI 395 Plus or something like that. Uh, it's a terrible name, but it's also the top of the line Strix Halo chip out right now. This unit comes with 128 gigabytes of RAM, which can be allocated to both CPU and GPU, with up to 96 being able to be given to the GPU, which is massive, and two terabytes of storage. First, let's look at some synthetic benchmarks. For this purpose, we will be using the Geekbench CPU multi-core and CPU single-core tests, as well as the GPU OpenCL test. Looking at the multi-core first, we see our GMK Tech convincingly beat out both the M4 Mac Mini and about double the performance of my 2024 Zephyrus G14. Moving on to single core, we see something completely different. The M4s mop the floor with all of the other machines, and the Strix Halo actually comes in near the bottom. The reason for this is that the Strix Halo has 16 cores, while the M4s have 10 and 12 respectively, meaning that each core on the Strix Halo will perform worse despite the overall performance being better or similar. Moving on to GPU, we can see the Strix Halo performs admirably, beating out both M4s and the Mobile 4070 of my Zephyrus. Alright, let's move on to something a bit more exciting. <laughs> let's play some video games. Starting off with CS2 at 1080p default settings, we're getting about 120-130 averages with 71% lows and 170 highs. This is some pretty reasonable performance considering that CS2 is a low to mid demanding game, and this is plenty enough to be playable. Next up, we have BeamNG Drive at 1080p Ultra settings on the largest map in the game, which is Johnson Valley. It actually stays above 60fps the entire time, which is super impressive considering that this game stresses both the CPU with its extremely realistic physics sandbox and the GPU with the ultra realistic graphics. So admirable performance from the little Strix Halo here. Despite the impressive gaming performance, this is not actually what these chips are marketed for. They're more meant for like AI workstation workloads due to their large amounts of VRAM rather than games. So now let's move on and allow this chip to really stretch its legs with some LLMs. Hopping into LM Studio, we start out with Quen 3 30 billion with 3 billion active parameters. This yields an impressive speed of 52 tokens per second. I would consider 20 tokens per second to be fine for any model and not feel slow, but this is pretty impressive. Take into account that I was also able to run this model with the full 256,000 token context length, which is pretty impressive. That is enough to fit some relatively sizable chunks of code and therefore allow you to, well, work with them on your own machine. Pretty cool. This has been a very brief look at the new Strix Halo chips from AMD. I hope you enjoyed. I have some other interesting projects coming up soon, and so you should subscribe to the channel, and I am out.